Good day to all of our staff and students. Over the past few weeks, the outbreak of the novel coronavirus has become a growing concern for countries around the globe. I have initiated the following steps. A coronavirus task team has already been established, consisting of representatives from the various departments on the campus, including the executive management, virologist, infectious disease experts, student and international affairs and human resources. The task team will liaise and work with the Provincial Department of Health and the National Institute of Communicable Diseases, in short NICD, to provide up-to-date information to staff and students, including our preparedness for handling an outbreak on our community. The virus that is causing the current outbreak is called the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, also SARS-CoV-2, and the disease is referred to as coronavirus disease of COVID-19. Human coronaviruses are common worldwide. Some coronaviruses are common causes of illness, which include respiratory illness, in humans throughout the world. Sometimes coronaviruses infecting animals can evolve to cause disease in humans. In other words, they have crossed the species barrier and become new novel coronaviruses for humans, such as the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus for or SARS, first recognized in China in 2002 as well as the current outbreak. The virus was only discovered at the beginning of this year. And obviously, the situation is evolving and there is still a lot that is not known. So the virus is spread by respiratory droplets and has traveled from China to multiple countries around the world. Fever screening is conducted at international airports. If there is a suspected case, procedures are in place for case isolation and testing so that the diagnosis can be made quickly. Suspected cases will be managed at designated hospitals with isolation facilities. People who develop symptoms of respiratory illness, including cough, fever, and shortness of breath, within 14 days of traveling to countries where coronavirus is known to be circulating, should seek medical care early and share information about the travel history with their doctors. Current symptoms include mild to severe respiratory illness with fever, cough and difficulty of breathing. Reported illnesses have ranged from infected people with little to no symptoms to people being severely ill and dying. Patients with underlying illness and the elderly, normally older than 60 years, appear to be at increased risk of severe illness. The government committed repatriation of South African citizens from China. The entire repatriation process has been carefully planned together with National Institute of Communicable Diseases, the Department of Health and the Department of Defence. The process will be guided by the World Health Organization's guidelines and the relevant South African laws and policy framework. So this will be a very controlled process. All citizens who are repatriated 
will be quarantined for 21 days. They will be screened for signs of illness before arriving. To clarify the difference between quarantine and isolation. Quarantine involves restricting the movement of persons with no signs of illness, but who may have been exposed. Isolation, on the other hand, is used to separate people who do have this specific illness. Hence, the people or the South African citizens from China will be quarantined and monitored very closely. Any person identified as showing symptoms will be isolated in a designated hospital. There is essentially no risk to the general public. If one or more of the quarantine individuals become ill, they will be attended to on site by infectious disease doctors and if necessary, they will be transferred to a designated hospital with isolation facilities. Pelanomi Hospital in Bloemfontein has been identified for isolation of persons with confirmed infections. The hospital has an isolation ward where they have previously handled cases of Congo fever and has required expertise for managing cases of COVID-19. Patients will be treated in a specific isolation ward by suitably trained and experienced healthcare workers and hence their patients and staff are not at risk of exposure. Regular communication regarding the virus is being distributed on all the university's platforms such as the internet and blackboard. Please take time to read it. I can assure all our staff and our students that the University of the Free State is monitoring this continuously and closely.